This is a review of the 350QX aluminum slash carbon fiber frame by Microheli. It's a replacement frame designed specifically for the 350QX series to serve as a replacement for the original white um, plastic frame that comes with it. One of the main reasons to do this is for the durability. Uh, the original frame, in my experience, and many others, breaks and snaps easily. It's not going to survive a crash. Even a minor flip on the grass or something can be fatal to this frame. And that can get really old after a while. Um, another problem is the motor pods. A lot of people have problems with the pod hole, the, the pod holes cracking over time from stress. Either you know over tightening the screws, or you know just the general shaking of the motors, and they crack. As for me, I, that happened to me like once, so uh, I got tired of it. I wanted something that was going to be more stable over time, and this is really the answer. If you're looking for that, if you're looking for something that's not going to break so easily when you have a crash or a minor incident, this is. This is your buy. Um, I, the, the worst crash I've had with it so far is I hit a tree and I have a little scuff mark on the little chip on the skid. And that's about it. So this is great. Um, I wanted to go over some of the design changes that I made. To it because the directions unfortunately which I have right here this is original box and directions come here they do tell you how to put the frame together but they're not very specific about where to put certain electronics and if you don't know what you're doing with that it can uh, be a little confusing so to start if you have a 350 QX2 or 3 the receiver antenna is a separate unit. It's not part of the board. So, and, and, and the default position for that is coming out of one of the skids. On this, you really can't attach it to one of the skids like you can the compass, which we'll get to in a second. So what I did was I ran that wire up and through this arm. And that's that little silver bit. I've noticed no problems putting the uh, receiver antenna there. I've done a range check, and I've got the DX6, so works perfect. I know I don't have any issues. So the carbon fiber has not affected it with the location I've chosen, and they didn't really specify what to do in that case, so I kind of just winged that, if you will. Um, the second thing... That's important to note. On most of these arms, I have the electronics running underneath the spacer. But on this arm specifically, it's running over it. And the reason for that is because if you don't run it over it, it's not going to reach. You're not going to reach the uh, little ESC. It's just not going to work. So, with that being said... Okay, that could, that could easily drive you batty because I've seen some people say that they had to try to reassign some of the motors and take some of the wires from the back. No, don't do that. It's that's just making extra work for yourself. Just run it underneath for that one and run, uh, I mean, run it over for the one and underneath for the rest of them. Another quick tip for the lights um, there's this little metal, metal ring bit that comes with the uh, lights already put in. Unscrew it and unscrew each light. Fish the electronic end of the light through the hole. If you don't do that, you're not going to fit the light through. It's just not going to fit. They don't really tell you to do that. You're just supposed to figure that out on your own, but that's what you need to do. If you try to force, if you try to force the light through, you're just going to break it. So don't force the light through. Just fish the wire. Uh, 
This is another difference, I think, if you have a QX2 or 3, the little Spectrum connector goes here. I kind of just wrapped it around the, uh, the wing nut thing, and you can easily get to it. I, I, ha I personally use the V3 firmware, so I connect up to the computer to check the health. It's important for me to have that. Um, another minor thing is the, the, uh, the zip ties. You can see I got little zip ties all over it. They don't tell you to use zip ties. You don't have to do it, but I think it's a good idea. And I got that idea from a, uh, another person on YouTube who built it, which leads me on to the second thing that this, that other person did. I think their name is AP308. And he put, he didn't like where the GPS was. This is a GPS unit. Now, they don't tell you on the directions where to put it, but on the website, they have a picture, a few pictures of it, and you can see that they have the GPS mounted up here. I'm not sure what the rationale is for that. Maybe they want to keep it far away from the camera, which you can mount on the bottom here. But um, I personally didn't like it on the top. Neither, neither did he. So I put it here. And it's really, really easy. You can either use sticky tape or you can use a little Velcro and you're pretty much good. That way, when the quad flips, the stress doesn't instantly go onto your GPS electronics. By the way, GPS is extremely stable with the carbon fiber. Um, I, I don't, it, I, to my knowledge, it doesn't affect it at all. If anything, I actually get a much faster lock than with the plastic body, I guess because it's not covered up. I've noticed the locks anywhere in between 10 to 15, um, 10 to 15 seconds. So, you know, and for the 350 QX3, I know they have the antenna and all that stuff sticking out. If you ask me, when you have this, that eliminates that problem and you don't even have to worry about anything breaking. So that's a major, major plus. Um... As for the power connector, they wanted the power connector, and this is from the picture again, not from those directions. They wanted the power connector to come through there. But one major problem with that is that the prop comes way too close. Even as it is, it comes close to the electronics when you have the big battery. But as long as you use this, you're really not going to hit it. I've flown it plenty of times. It's fine. But if it was in here, you could see how that would be a disaster. because You can't shove this wire in nice and tight. So instead, I ran a power connector up through here. You could also, I guess, do it over here if you wanted to. I liked over here because most of my batteries have, wire, have the wire coming through here. Well, it just made sense to meet it like that. Uh, side note, this is the XT60 connector. Your... Blade 350QX, 2, 3, whatever, is not going to have this unless you specifically mod it on there. Um, so don't worry about that. But if you do have this, you should shave it. Because if you don't shave it, you're not going to fit it through. It'll fit the regular connector, but it won't fit this. So just a quick tip to save some time. You guys just shave off some of the plastic. Not a big deal, but important to know. Uh, just a quick look at how to route the compass, because that was a bit of a pain. If you don't route it from here and then down, you're just not going to have enough room. You can't mount it there, you can't route it there, it's got, it pretty much got to go through there. So route it down and around. Uh, you know, perhaps one of, the, one of the most important changes to this of all is the battery roof. Now, I, don't ha I have a non-stock battery here. I have a third-party battery, Giant Power 3,300 milliamp hour battery in this quad right now. But even the default batteries, the E-Flight 3,000 milliamp hour batteries, they don't fit. When the screws are put down tight, they just don't fit. You have to loosen the screws a little bit, and then, you know, that risks losing the screws um, or the battery falling off. That's even worse. So really, you can you cannot get a battery in here 
easily or at all without um, unscrewing the screws. That's really annoying. I have a feeling that this was probably only tested with the 2,200 milliamp hour batteries. Those fit just fine, but the much larger ones will not. They have they have problems. So what I did to resolve this was very simple. Um, you see these little washers, little white washers. Those little washers were big enough that I just put them on uh, underneath each of the five screws on top of the battery door there and that creates just enough standoff that you can slide this in and out with ease so that is that is a perfect solution that i have found to uh rectify that problem so to recap this is this this is a great build this is a great frame. I highly recommend it. It is kind of expensive. Uh, you can pick it up at Horizon Hobby. They're selling it there for uh, $125 if you use the coupon code EXTRA10. You get 10% off. And, you know, at the cost of the bodies, which are, you know, 30 bucks a pop, after a while, to have to have it, it just pays for itself. And plus, you've got a really cool, unique little look here that I love. Um, they have can they they are making canopies for this now. They've got a couple canopies at the Micro Heli store. One of them is like an army green one, and the other one is like a yellow one. You might want to check those out if you don't like this raw look. I might actually get it myself. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, leave me your questions or comments. If you have, uh, if you need any help putting it together, I can definitely give you some tips or, uh, try to guide you. All in all, the build did take me quite a bit of time because I'm not used to building, putting stuff together like this. And I didn't know some of the little, uh, details that you have to watch out for. But once you have it built, you've got a great, solid machine. Um, I guess that's it.